All right, so I got my May spinning box. Finally, it came. I had to do like an unboxing thing. Um, so it, it just seemed right to do. I've been getting them for over a year and I really do enjoy them. I don't get through nearly an, a month's worth in the time that it takes to get the next box. Uh, but that's because I buy other things. I'm pretty sure if I had gotten only the spinning box, then I would probably have more than enough to keep me busy in between boxes. Um, but I don't. So, well, I do enjoy getting them and they are definitely the highlight of the day when I do. So for May, the theme was farm life. Um, actually that kind of sucks. Sorry. Um, <laughs> So, let's see what we've got. Um, let's see. Of course, the thing that I love the most about the, um, about the box is getting that breed study. That one sample of just the pure fiber from a single animal. Um, I haven't gotten through them because I've also been the, um, been distracted by shave them to save them but um you know it, it definitely ties in with my goal for like the year don't cut myself um of just trying to explore like the rare breeds um some of those have been in spinning box before i think the rumor is there's actually one of those types in this box uh, maybe so that'll be fun uh, I think I might already have it though, but if I don't, then it's still gonna be an adventure. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, let's see. Turn that address away. Okay, so what we see here as we're opening this guy. Let's see. Lots of packing stuff thingies and some candy. I always get candy in here and that's usually good. So let's see. Let's see some cow vanilla flavored cow tails. Chewy caramel with a cream center. So an Atkinson black cow chewy chocolate caramel candy. So Kind of like a Tootsie Roll, I'm guessing. Um, so, let's go ahead and put this guy back here so you can see my horrible face. Um, and get some of this out of here. Okay. That can be useful, I'm sure. Um, although since I can't figure out within a few seconds or any immediacy since I have no intention of sending any presents yet. Um, it's probably going to go into my recycle bin, sadly. All right, so let's see here. All right, there we go. All right, so first up, we've got a postcard. I have friends that love getting postcards and mail, so these actually will come in handy. Uh, let's see. You are beautiful in so many ways. And this is a, um, a pattern, a crochet pattern for a coaster. That could be cool. I know some people that would love that. Let's see. Is it? And it's a sheep coaster. So that could actually be really interesting for some of like the wider white tools um, that, or even some of the natural colors. Um, you could just go ahead and use the natural colors and make them look like all the different sheep that you're doing. So this is actually gonna be fun. <laughs> Not that they aren't always fun, but um, let's see. The card from Mary. Okay, so fiber time. Okay. 
Samantha J's Fiber Farm. Ooh. I love her stuff. It's always a joy when I get um, her samples in the box. I really do need to order from her. Spinning Box 2019 May. She thinks my tractor's sexy. Merino and Tencel. So. Oh. Okay, definitely doesn't like a John Deere tractor. But, oh. Oh, that feels wonderful. But, yeah, that's probably about an ounce of fiber. Perfect sample size. Take me probably a m half an afternoon on my spinning wheel or forever on my spindles because I'm that slow on my spindles. I really need to get faster. But, oh, not sure. I'll have to see how I spin it. I'm probably going to spin it fine because it just feels like something that wants to be a cowl or a shawl. Uh, when I do when I do go through my boxes, I do try and think of how I'm going to spin it uh, and what potentially might be a project that I could use it for if I did it well enough. Um, so probably a cowl um, around my neck or a scarf. Um, and yeah, we'll see how that one goes eventually. Okay, next. Ooh. Picture of a sheep. Ranching tradition fiber. I also do wind up with a lot of random bags. Uh, let's see. So this is an ounce of BFL. Ooh, my favorite fiber. Uh, just like practically everyone's. Uh, at least for like that. I call it kitchen sink fiber because everyone has one. Um, it, it's that one that is your go-to as far as I'm, or at least for me, it's my go-to. Um, I have been tempted by some other breed fleeces that I've been exposed to through Shave Em to Save Em. Um, but BFL is always going to be, jokingly enough, my BFF. Um, so color rye. Okay. Type bundle. Nice little knot here. Uh, remember how to do that so I can replicate it. Um, but yeah, it it's definitely BFL. I mean, I love it. It just feels so wonderful in your hands. It's a real joy to spin. Not sure about the color though. Um, I'm not usually for the rye, mustard, browns, and all of that, but I might go ahead and on my wheel at least, uh, let's see, since I've started doing my breed studies, I've gotten more invested in like how something's done. Um, I think this is comb carded top um, or roving. Um, could be carded top or car combed cut top. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying to learn. Um, but I might just try and long draw it. It, strangely enough, from the, um, from the sample, um, from the breed study, uh, I think it was in December, they had some BFL in it. And I was so amazed at how big and long it was. I mean, let's see. So anyway, down on the farm, the real deal. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is talking about who grew it, that they're a fifth generation rancher. Um, and they raise sheep and cattle in southwest Montana. So very close to me. I'm in Oregon. <laughs> um, so if I'm wanting to get more from them for locality or for localness, um, this would be really good. Let's see. Asha, Asha took the photo of the sheepies. And yes, I am talking funny, but this is what you get. All right. 
Yay, next. Ooh, colors. I'm trying to get more used to doing, to being in colors myself. Let's see, what do we got here? Grandpa's Helper, 100% BFL Wool, Born in a Barn, Fiber Arts. Okay. So, given the colors, I could mix it with that rye from the la you know, from this last one and from Montana. And that could be interesting. That'd give me two ounces. Um, maybe separate out the greens or the green parts of it, and then just bulk out the brown and orange. And yeah, that I could play with color with this because they're both BFLs, so like to like. And that could help. Um, I probably have some more BFLs from other boxes, so I, so I could definitely work with it um, independently. Um, more color. Ooh, and I even got tomato seeds. Heirloom tomato seeds, Lithuanian crested pink. If I were going to play with those, I'd have to get them in the ground now. Um, so anyway, this one is called, um, so this one is looking like it's got its theme from the tomatoes. Um, might have to wait on those tomatoes until next year. I think they'll keep. Oh, come on. I like having goss green. I like having ribbons. Come on. Come on. Yes. Okay. Almost there. <laughs> I might edit this out. But, you know, hey, real people have real issues untying things. Okay, so this is heirloom t tomatoes, U.S. grown, targi wool, uh, Friends and Fiber, Esti. So it's from Friends and Fiber. And tomato themes, so um, red orange, pinkish, green, so, ooh, and the tardy is so springy. Let's see here. Yeah, I know some people for their unboxings, they just look and not touch. I can't do that. I really, really seriously can't. Um, but, oh, I like the feel of that. Don't know about the colors. I might try and fractal spin it. Um, maybe. Or I might just divvy it off so that I can keep, do for like, spin for long colors. But yeah, if that's an ounce, that's going to be a lot. Okay, and if any of you fiber providers are watching me do this and think that I'm totally mishandling your wools, uh, I'm sorry. I... Or if you don't agree with me, um, you know, I, I'd be open to discussions. I'm in a household that eventually um, has, that ultimately has two cats and two dogs, and one of those dogs is a puppy who loves fiber almost as much as his auntie, uh, his pet auntie. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tie this down, and let's see if we can manage to thread this guy through without too much grief and hardship and wailing and gnashing of teeth and lamentations of billions. Yay! Q. 
keep these guys together, although those seeds will probably go out to the garden. And then figure it out. I mean, today is actually here in Oregon. Um, I'm in Portland and it's a cold day. I'm not even thinking about going outside. I've wanted to spend today outside spinning, but it's still in the 50s and it's May. It's almost June and it's still in the 50s. Too cold for me. Uh, let's see. Well, this caught my eye first. So 57 chapters. I've had stuff from them before and I, have I spun it yet? I think I've spun some of it. So, and I, I did like it. Um, so they do show up from time. Oh yeah, it was, it was the purple and white and the yellow and yellow, orange and white. And I like that, that, you know, the two little braids and they went through really fast. Fresh from the farmer's market, it's Starbright hemp. I don't think I've spun that before. Faux cashmere. I adore faux cashmere. I'm still working my way through a, um, a sample from my first spinning box, actually, like a year ago that I'm doing on my spindle. Um, and I just, I adore it. It, it's just so soft. It's so slippy. Um, I really genuinely hope I'm doing it justice. So seeing it in this blend is going to be interesting because uh, hemp to me is always a coarser, it's a bast fiber. So it's a little bit coarser. Um, then you've got the star bright, you've got a bamboo rayon, which is something else I like. In fact, I still, this is how much of a, of a sable I've got going on here, I swear. I've got some bamboo and some silk that I have from, it's probably the 12th and third, probably the, the bamboo is probably about the 12th or 13th fiber that I ever bought ever. I was at Wonder Wool Wales. Um, and so I bought some there uh, and that was like back in, I want to say 2011 or 2012 in the UK. And then I have some silk that I got from the spinning class I took with Amy Singer of Nitty.com where I learned to spin silk hankies and got this shat um, top high-low spindle. And uh, we got a sample of some uh, Sweet Georgia fiber and I'm digressing. But uh, anyway, so I haven't spun that yet. Uh, to me, it just seems like I'm not there yet, but I'm spinning faux cashmere. So why am I delayed? <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, let's see. After the bamboo rayon, there's some Falkland and some Merino. So th this has, oops, I ripped through the label. Oh, well, this has some potential. Little bumps. Let's see here. Where's the end? Well, already I'm kind of not wanting to disrupt the little bumps here because I can just poke my finger through and treat them like Rolex. So little faux eggs. Yeah, long draw this maybe, if I can get a good grip on it. Yeah, that could be fun. And, you know, sea of colors? Quite like those. Although, quite frankly, I use a plain cotton warp on it and I could probably put it on my loom and make a wonderful wrap for a friend who hopefully never watches me on YouTube. Um, if this even goes to YouTube. Um, so that's 57 chapters. Another one I see quite frequently on my thing. Um, okay. LMB Acre Alpacas, Alpaca Serenades, 
from St. Paris, Ohio. So I've got a, ooh, got a organic dandelion and peach rooibos tea. Uh, it's a steep by Bigelow. I don't, I don't know about the dandelion. The peach had me. Um, I know there's probably some health benefits to the dandelion. Uh, let's see what we got here. We'll, we'll just kind of look at this before we get touching the fiber. Um, so this is an art bat. It's 60%. I'm going to mangle this. It's the alpaca that begins with an H. I, I think it's Hasaya. I, I'm going to just stop there. Um, and then 20% Shuri alpaca and 20% Merino. And if you're going to diss me on my spell pronunciation of that, uh, feel free. And I will feel equally as free to ignore you because I'm horrible at it. So, um, so I've got, oh, I've got a couple of cards in here and pictures of the thing. So, and then here's that tea. Let's see, steep four minutes. But it's like, it's already, it's like there's alpaca in here. Like, oh yeah, uh, you know, it's the whole alpaca in my bags. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this is just so soft. Oops, a little bit of VM in there, but they're alpacas. That's definitely one thing that I've learned with spinning from like fresh uh, raw fleeces, VM. It, it's what's in your fiber. So this is kind of cool. It, it kind of has shades of the Cascadia flag <laughs> to be all partisan, but yeah, I, I definitely like the feel of that. Not sure how I'm going to spin it up, but it does, it does feel soft. <laughs> so. Um, it definitely, if I spin it right, will lend itself to something, um, I think if I can do a really fine spin on it, I might try for, um, well, depending on the yardage I get at the end, I uh, might go for something, um, wispy and smoke-like, so... You know, that kind of to me says a cowl because of the way the fiber is not going to have too much memory. All of its memory is going to come from the merino, really, I believe. Um, but yeah, so a cowl, a scarf, um, not so much for what I'm thinking a hat, unless it were going to be like one of those big floppy, you know, beret type hats that doesn't really need to rely on a or anything like that. Uh, let's see. That can wait. We'll go with this. Okay, so down on the farm and Yarn Fairy and the Pixies. I've had them before too. Um, so this, this is Cheviot. So this is actually, Cheviot is the first breed I ever spun. It's what taught me to spin. Um, and so that's all of the ordering stuff. They're from California. So again, someone who's local-ish to Oregon. And it's really compacted down. It's tight. I have to let that like um, air out. Let's see. Uh, I guess there's a thing you can do where you can let it hang in like your shower. Well, not in your shower but in your bathroom and the steam from the shower will help it to you know uncompact um, and it'll make it like easier or funner to spin or something like that eat um, and I'm probably doing this from like the totally wrong end yep the wrong end of the stick so love the colors
probably, although they are really together and short, so not sure. Although because I have such fond memories of a Cheviot being my first fiber, I might also hold on to it as a um, here, kids, um, when I'm spinning, play with this. Although that seems like a waste, but we'll see. Um, uh, I just realized it's probably inspired by the rooster. Oh, where did I put that card? I, I desperately try and keep fiber and cards together. Um, I'm trying desperately also to get better about my documentation so I can remember that, oh, I like this, I need to order this from so-and-so. Um, okay, I've got two choices left. Do I go for the big sample from uh, Camage uh, Fiber Arts? Um, or do I go with the Breed Fiber? And given what I can see of the label from the Breed Fiber, I'm gonna go with the one that we get from from them every month. So, down on the farm, uh, definitely inspired by the rooster. Um, this is a 23 micron merino, so I, we generally get merino um, from this larger sample, and I exclusively spin these on my wheel, which is why I don't have very much throughput on them um, for spinning. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's silky soft, and it's just so many colors together, I, I don't know how I'm going to spin this and not be muddy. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's a way, but I, A, do not have the patience to, um, to spin those down, but this is top because everything is all like even. You know, it looks like everything's the same length. It's just so smooth. So I always get confused. Top is worsted, I think. Because woolen has all of the air in it. I think, maybe, possibly. Again, I don't know for sure. I'm still learning that part of it. But yeah, otherwise this is going to be an absolute delight to spin. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do it justice. <laughs> um, let's see, we've got our breed. Oh! I think we're going to take a little break and I'm going to hold out on the breed because A, I love the breed, um, study one, but Broadway Creations gave me a little, I think it's a pin. It feels like a pin. I always get something from them as well. Oh no, it's a button. It's just got a really tiny button. That could be interesting. Uh, let's see, another cow tail, and another black cow, and oh, some more little buttons, little, little sheep buttons. Look at those, those are cute. And I'm definitely amassing a collection of these um, sacks. Let's see. I think I'm out of the sack right. So we've got one with that's a blonde. Got one that's green. Another blonde. And the purple. Those are so cool. They might be good on like a baby jacket or something, like if you do the baby surprise jacket. Um, all right. So, last one. The breed study. So this month it was the Caracol. This is actually one of the breeds that's on the Shave'em to Save'em. Uh, it is an endangered breed. 
Um, it's not critical uh, like some of some other breeds that I'm currently working my way through, uh, but it is endangered. Uh, let's see here. This is why I have my I own my own stapler too, so I can restaple this guy back on there. But uh, let's see. So the Caracol may be the oldest breed of domesticated sheep. Um, it felts easily. Um, wool combs are recommended for prep, and it can be spun bulky or thin. So this is actually going to be really good. I have not bought my Caracol, um, Caracol, yeah, Caracol, again, pronunciation, I hate it. Um, so this breed, um, is on the list by the Livestock Conservatory, Conservatory, Conservationists, whatever, the people that are doing, shave them, save them. Um, I haven't bought mine yet, so I get to play around with this and get a first opinion. And then I can decide, you know, I mean, I can, right now, don't know if it's been washed or not. I can feel the lanolin, so... And this feels a little bit matted, so I'm kind of inclined to think not. Um, but, okay, these seem like they're guard hairs. Is this the dual coat? Uh, let's see, dual coated, I think. No, it's not dual coated. And given the feel that I think I've got lanolin, on, you know, that I've got lanolin on my hands, it was, I think, lightly scoured. I've got a little bit of color in here. Um, which makes me think that it is a dual coat breed. Where's that card? Although, no, it's the first sheep. Provided more than a beautifully patterned silky. Yep, dual coated. Um, matures into a fleece of carpet wool, which consists of a long, lustrous outer coat and a fine, soft inner coat, which is why the combs make sense. So now that I know what to expect, this stuff here near this cut end is going to be the soft downy type wool, I guess. And then the Santa Claus looking things are what is going to be combed out. So there potentially could be waste that then the softer stuff could be, um, home carded I guess yeah I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that I have this now because I don't know what I would have done I think I would have my old my old doubt of competence <laughs> and then I would have just read up on it and hopefully powered through it but this way if I totally botch this up, I know, and I'll be able to know where I did, where I did wrong. But the, unlike a lot of things, it, it's so tight together. I mean, I've got this stuff here that is just loose bulk of this, it just wants to stay together. I think I read somewhere on my 
Ravelry or Facebook group about this that was used to make like the the um, Santa beards. I kind of see why. <laughs> so, all right, let's roll this back together, cut side out. And we'll put this on the top. That'll be my sample. And that's my main spinning box. I really hope that at some point they do um, some of the critical breeds um, for this. But um, anyway, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I guess, um, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, it's Saturday. I've barely had any tea. So, fairly happy. So that's it for me. Um, have fun, and I hope you enjoyed this, I guess. <laughs>